Hi, welcome to another episode of our Watch and Learn with Handy Quilter. Today we're going to talk, be talking about more about rulers, specifically yeah. our arc set rulers. Right. I'm Johnny Barfus. With me is... I'm Kelly Ashton. We are educators here at Handy Quilter. We're so glad to have you here today. And let's get started. First, we're going to talk about stitching with our machine using rulers. Okay. Right? Sure. I want to talk about settings first. Okay. So this machine that we have set up, I have it set to start needle down or start and stop with the needle going down. That way when I have come to the end of a ruler or come to the end of a point and I want to switch positions, my machine's going to stop with the needle down. Perfect. And I can move it, start going again, stop needle down. Okay, so needle down. That's one thing that I really like. You I, like that as well? I like that as well. Okay. Very much. Yep. Uh, I also have it set in cruise. Okay. Cruise mode means the machine's going to keep on stitching. So if I come to a stop, until I hit stop, it's going to keep stitching up and down, right? That's right. I think like to think of it as like a car. We, rec we liken it to like a car. So you come to a stop sign, your motor's still running, and you hit the gas pedal and you go. Right? That's what cruise is like for me, for sure. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Precision. It's like that fancy car that shuts off at the stoplight, and then before you can go again, it, the engine has to restart. So, yeah. so it's it's we have two options because we're all different. We like different things. So right. we both prefer cruise, but I there's just, I like my cruise to be set really low when I'm stitching okay. with rulers. I don't set it very high. Yeah, so it's not going very fast. I think this one's set at 25. Okay. So it's not going to be going very fast, but it is going to keep moving until I hit the stop. Right. Okay, yeah. excellent. And then as soon as you push the start, the needle starts pulsating, stitching, so that it's just ready to go with you when you're ready to go. Right. Okay. okay. Also, we do have our sure foot that we use for rulers. That's right. That has a higher shank on it, so it doesn't. you're less likely to have your ruler, your hopping foot, hop over the top of that yeah. ruler and damage your machine. So I always like to clarify this, because your machine machine came with a foot that's called the ruler foot right. and it's fine to use that with the rulers because anywhere you put the ruler all the way around that round foot you're still going to get a stitch a fourth away from the edge but just a couple years ago we came up with something called the shore foot and just like Johnny said it has a higher profile and it makes it so that you can't the ruler cannot bounce up on top of it and fit between the foot and the needle so less chance of hitting the needle right. or the needle hitting your ruler so the shore foot is just to clarify that we have both feet that would work with rulers. Yes. Okay. And we also have our ruler base on this machine. Show yep. them the ruler base. Like the ruler base. Yep. So got to have a ruler base. And this just fits right on the throat of your machine and moves with the machine wherever it goes. So it's perfect for right. using rulers. Okay. okay. We have three different sets of arc sets, A, B, and C. Yes. And we're just going to show not them all together, but just why you might want a different one, a different set, yes. right? They're all different sizes. So this quilt here, we're going to be showing a little bit stitching on. Let's show this one first, if we could, Josh. This is one of our favorite designs to quilt with rulers, and we call it the continuous curve, but we usually show it in a nine patch. So we want to show you some different ideas with a continuous curve in different shapes. Mm -hmm. This is like a Lone Star, kind of shrunken down, right? Yeah. And if you can see, with we just used um, an arc ruler to do the continuous curve design throughout that star block. Now Johnny's working on squares over there, but they're offset. It's not the typical nine patch, they're offset, so the pathway is a little bit different. But I like to tell anyone in a ruler class, as long as you have a good set of curves, you can do, and a good straight, you can do just about anything right. with rulers. So the arc sets are perfect because they give you so many different um, arc like deeper arcs or more gradual arcs, just different size arcs. So right. I'm, I'm gonna move this quilt out a little. Okay, bit. excellent. So I was just gonna show here. I have three different rulers, and the different angles that we could get using whichever one we use. This is actually four different sizes, four different profiles, right? So this one you can see here, you'd get that angle. So, so you're choosing an arc depending on how deep you want that arc to stitch inside your block. Right. So you've got a deeper arc or more gradual arc. Mm-hmm. Right. That one would be more gradual. It, it almost looks like it wouldn't even be much of an arc on this side. Mm -hmm. But you have to remember that your stitch is going to be a fourth of an inch away 
from the edge of that ruler. So because it's just a crust, it's gonna, at its peak, it's gonna be about a fourth of an inch away from the edge. Right. So, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna stitch using this one. You like the deeper arc? I like the deeper, I think that's the one we chose, right? Yes. Yes, the deeper arc. And I'm gonna start up here. And like she mentioned, these aren't all like a, like a nine patch, they're offset. So we're gonna be stitching them kind of. Uh, I'm gonna tell you a few more rules as Johnny gets going stitching. One thing you need to do when you're using rulers is make sure that you slow down. So we're choosing to use rulers because we want our lines to be really precise and exact. So it's really important. You can go ahead and start stitching. So it's not a race? Not today. Oh, thank heavens. <laughs> so he's holding down on the ruler with his left hand, but not so hard that it makes it hard to move the machine underneath you. So if you're pushing too hard with your left hand, you feel a lot of drag with the machine. So that means you need to lighten up your touch. So he's pushing down. And then he's also, with his left hand, he's pushing the ruler against the foot. And then with his right hand, you can see he's driving the machine. And he's also pulling the foot right up against the ruler. So it's a two-sided connection there that you have to make it both ways. And I'm using these little registration marks that are etched on the back of that foot. I mean, sorry, the back of that. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but there's some little, each, each ruler has a small registration mark. They're fourth inch lines, and they're either dashed or they're solid lines. Mm -hmm. and, and because of the design he's choosing, one of them fits the dashed line. The second dashed line fits exactly on his seam. So it gives him that guideline to line it up right. for. And this is a little bit awkward, right, with that? Uh, it is a little bit awkward to hold it that direction. But I like in the ruler class that Kelly teaches here at Handy Quilter Studios, she kind of makes people <laughs> stitch out like that so to we, practice. We don't get to take our quilt off and move it around very easily, so we have to learn how to hold our ruler in kind of uncomfortable positions sometimes so that we can, we can use them to their best ability to help us measure so that we can do less marking. I really like the look of that. So, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, come up this way. Oh. And then when you go back, you can just go all across oh, the bottom. Oh, there. man. That's why we have an expert, you guys. That's why Johnny's an expert. <laughs> and when Johnny holds that ruler, he's making sure that he leaves a fourth of an inch. So oh, he man. wants to hit right at that seam, but he has to move the ruler a fourth of an inch away from the edge so that he has room to get the foot right to that point that he's going right. for. And I, I've said this before, I didn't use rulers until just this year, really. And I really love it. I really love the way that they, um, the exactness I can get. Yes. And every time you use them, do you feel like you get a little more confident? Oh yeah, totally. Like I did one quilt and I, I really wish I would have kept the track of the timing on that one that I did with the, anyway, I did one quilt here and I spent hours and hours yeah. stitching out the, these lines on this quilt and it, I just love the way it turned out. I love straight lines. One thing you have to remember is the way Johnny just drove it right there, that's the most natural way to do it because our, our, our arms want to come to our bodies. That's natural. Right. So when he does it this other direction where he's swinging it around like this, he has to be really careful and push that machine right up against the ruler because that's not the natural flow of our body. So he has to really be careful about watching that connection there. So. And I, I'm getting a little off, just slightly, just ever so slightly. It's okay. And that, that's okay. Uh, Let's do one more and then we'll, one we'll more, show them we some can other move on. Yeah. All right. Let Ooh. me see. You did a good job hitting those points. I oh, really love it. Yeah, good job. So then should I just go back up? So then you'll go down to the bottom and then you're going to drive it all the way up across the, and then you'll come down. Like and do this, it this way, way right? Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So we could 
keep going or, yeah. Since we can't fit the whole quilt in our throat space, you would just go that far and then advance your quilt and do the next row. Do you want to tell them a little bit about these, this quilt here that we're working on? Yeah, this is one of the quilts. Um, this is a table runner, actually, and we, I th think we've shown it before, but we did some felting on this with our new felting foot. So this is wool applique. We've got to do a little finishing. We didn't finish, but, but felting is a lot of fun. You there? Yep. Okay. So Excellent. then I would just step, move up here and come down this row. Right. Right? Yep. Okay, Perfect. excellent. Yeah. Should we show them the project that you brought in? Yes, so I wanted to show you another design that I love to do with arcs. So it's quilted out on this quilt right here. I'll let you hold that, Johnny. I love it. And this, it's just a, a design, you see it a lot of times in quilting on Pinterest, but it's, it's fun to do. It's perfect border design. And so I wanted to just kind of show you how that pathway would go so that if you're working with arc rulers. Okay. Are you going to draw that out? Yeah. So I'm going to use Oh, this. excellent. Okay. And I'm just going to set my fabric on top of this board. So I have something. Ah, cool. Something. And I just need an arc, so I'm going to go with this one right here. Okay. One thing you want to know is when you're stitching around one of these arcs, when your needle goes around that point, it actually doesn't make a point. It actually curves around there. So if I want a point, I actually need to, I'll show you on here. So I have this fabric kind of gridded, and often, I don't often need to mark it like this. Sometimes my piecing will allow me to do this, but sometimes in the borders I'll have to make little marks. I definitely want to mark my spacing across so that it's even, so that my, my arc makes a nice mm -hmm. point. I'm going to go backwards just because that works best for here, but because I don't want to stitch around that point, I'm going to hold that point past the edge, and I'm going to stitch up to the point, and then I'm going to adjust my ruler Remember, I'm keeping it a fourth of an away, a, a fourth of an inch away there. And as long as I have some good markings that tell me how deep I want my arc to go and how far apart I want the arc to go, this is really simple to quilt out in a border. Can you see how that works? And I love that tip for getting that sharp point. And, and I do want to use the same part of the arc. If it was a circle, it wouldn't matter which part of the ruler I was using. But because it's an arc, I need to make sure that I am using the same part of the arc. Mm -hmm. So I'm just putting like the tip an inch past my point, and that's my, that's my guideline. And I would just stitch it across there. And, and, and if you can see in the, in the st stitching that we showed, I showed a few other lines coming mm -hmm. back. Um, there's a lot of ways I might make a, a one inch mark down from there and when I come back the other way I'm going to just move it down like that and then I'm coming back to my same point. Make that mark an inch below and your the ideas of what you can do with these arc rulers in a border are, are just kind of endless. There's so yeah. many things you can do. That's amazing. Yeah, it's And you're using so the panda pencil, I'm using right? the panda pencil to mark this dark fabric so okay. you can see where I was, where I was drawing. Um, it was kind of hard to put two quilts on for us to, to right. demo on, so I just am drawing it on the paper for you, so. Yeah. Like I said, arcs are some of my favorite tools. I tell you every time we do rulers, oh, that's my favorite ruler. This week it's arcs. I love yeah. arcs. Um, you have a lot of favorite rulers. I do have a lot of favorite rulers. Let's show them the arc sets because we idea. have three different sets. We have arc A templates and it comes with five different rulers so you actually get ten different arcs. Okay and then arc B they're nested rulers and there's three rulers that are nested so you actually get one, two, three, four, five different arcs in this set. And this one has two rulers, so you just get one, two, three in this one. So I wanted to show you really quickly how to get inside, or maybe you could show them oh, yeah. with the machine, how you uh -huh. get inside the nested rulers so they can see how they'll use the nesting ones. Okay, so... Let me move this out of your way. All right. We will just imagine that we wanted to do the inside of this one, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So I would cut my thread, right? Right. Anytime you're going into the center of a ruler that's been nested and it doesn't have a notch, you just have to make sure that your thread is cut before you get to the inside. So we'll imagine we're going to go right here. We just have to okay. lift this hopping foot. So what did you call it? The hopping it's foot. It's a hopping foot. It hops. So you can just take your hands and lift up on that foot. Yeah. This is spring loaded. And it'll go right inside. Yeah. I remember the first time I got a call and someone's like, what? They didn't know that did that. So sometimes it's a little bit of a surprise to people. But again, you just lift that up, slide it underneath, just like that. I, I found then, that a lot when we first came out with new feet. We were teaching people how to change the feet. And yeah. they were kind of surprised that the foot lifted like that. So, yeah. that's so if I wanted to do something like that, I could just use that inner inner arc like that. And actually the inner arcs are pretty easy to use because you're not fighting, kind of staying against it. The, the inner arcs are a little easier to right. focus. So. I can see how that'd be nice because you're not yeah. like, I don't know, yeah. easy to move around. Yeah. So hopefully you've got some ideas of how to use the arc templates. Yeah. Um, we just want, we love rulers. We like using them on our quilts and we just want to hopefully inspire you to try and use them on your quilts as well. So. Yeah. Let's talk about this cool behind us. I went through the building. I found this one specifically for the arc. Looks like she used some arcs to set these up with. This is a vintage top uh, purchased off of eBay or online or something by Brenda and then quilted by one of our national educators, Mary Beth Crapel. And she, I just held up some of these. I think this one looked like that angle there. So you can see that she may or might have done used an arc like that to get that angle there and then this angle here same thing she might have used an arc like that what then, a great example of how to use the arc rulers right i think mary beth had to have used mary beth comment and tell us how many arc rulers you use mary beth follows our social media and posts for us so yeah you did a beautiful job quilting beautiful that quilt. beautiful quilt. We love it. yeah it hangs out right in our hallway so we see it every day yeah all right. Anything else we need to cover about arcs? I don't think so. Okay. I think that's it. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching today. We really appreciate it. Go ahead and like this video and share it with your friends if you want, if you found value in it. And be sure to follow us on our YouTube channel. Right. Yep. Thank you. Be, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And most of all, have fun quilting this week.